All right, guys, we got some Dan Machi content from Mr. Any News. I know that Dan Machi content is not hot at all, and people don't really care because people don't even know this shit's happening. But hey, for the few people enjoying it, we got the Seer slash Freya connection explained. Oh my god. This might just be one of the biggest twists I've seen in anime in a while. I never would have thought it was Dan pretty Machi good. had it in it, but what they just revealed to us was absolutely insane. I don't think it was... Like, the idea that there was a connection with Seer and Freya, and maybe them being the same person, was not, like, a super big mystery. No, it, it, it was very obvious from the beginning that there was something off about them, and it's all about, like, how could they be the same person? What exactly is going on? When I realized that Horn was also a piece of the puzzle, it just blew my mind. It's peak fantasy capitalizing on four methodical seasons of build-up. Now... I know there might be some confusion behind how it all comes together, but this video will focus specifically on that. I I'll explain the connection between Seer, Freya, and Horn, the bet made to determine each of their fates, then the unexpected results at the end of it. Basically, Freya just not asking for consent. She just crashing out. Wonder why she's even crying here as Seer, because this is Freya right now. But she's just saying, "All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hypnotize the entire Orario. Goodbye." There were a few missing pieces the anime didn't really show us. Obviously, if you haven't watched up to episode 4 though, then you should watch that then come back. If you have, then let's talk about how Seer was Horn, then Freya, and doesn't exist at all anymore. Yep. But first! Very quickly before we get started though. With Very quickly before we get started is another ad segue, but I call that ad segment. What is this? Overlord? With the Overlord movie right around the corner. Oh shit. I've decided to re-release the Succubation. Succubay merch drop. Shirts for two weeks only. These aren't the same Succubay shirts I've sold before though, but rather a more high quality version on par with the ones I... I've released with Moon. I don't know if I would... I bet that I would wear this shirt if the Succubay and the Japanese characters weren't on it. Something about the letters makes me think it's cringe. But if I just have, like, you know, minimalistic art of this girl with the horns making a kind of, you know, probably kind of like a yandere kind of face, I'd probably wear it. I would. It's just a suck you bay, you know, you're on public and people see, uh, I, I don't know, it's just, ugh. Or high quality version on par with the ones I've released with Mugen. So, the hoodie is by far one of the comfiest that I own, and the shirts are a thick 100% cotton with lots of durability. Like, straight up, I would rock it if I just got rid of the text. Maybe Anonyus could, you know, make a custom order for me, specifically. I'm not saying that this is bad, it's my personal preference. Maybe some people love the whole sucky bait thing. But me, as a consumer, thinking about wearing anime merch in public, it's better if it's, like, more minimalistic and doesn't just fucking say, Look at this! Sucky best girl, but sucky bay! The design is also applied in a way to ensure it'll never fade, so if you're looking for the best cool. quality version of the Succubay design there is, this would definitely be it. You can get yours now by visiting Succubay.shop, and we'll be sure to get it to you before the holiday. How much? I actually want to check. How much is this? $75 hoodie, $35 t-shirt, which is actually not that expensive. Maybe the t-shirt's on the higher side, but a hoodie I thought would go for like more than a hundred. Holiday season. But anyway, to start things off from the very beginning, everything began with her. A poor young poor girl so content nameless. with life that she would rather stop living than spend another second in this ragged body. Right. Before Horn was nameless or Horn. She was Seer, and she was an orphan. Then Freya showed up. Then we exchanged the names. ...of hers. It was right as she was about to let go for good that a beautiful existence she didn't even know was possible would step in to offer her everything. Her question was posed as if to find amusement, but the response she got was far more amusing than she could have ever imagined. Where people before would always answer with love and fealty, never before had this goddess received a request so selfishly arrogant. It was an interesting plea that ultimately led to a trading of fates. See? This is the same shit with Priscilla, man. Whenever you have a girl that is super, like... Like, a bunch of people sent for her. You know how she think? She thinks that everyone is like a spineless fucking cockroach and the world will bend to my ideals. And the more you simp, you don't get her favor. You know how you get her favor? You fucking... You kind of match that arrogance. You be prideful. You kind of, like, say, fuck you. I'm gonna also match your energy, and then they're gonna, they're gonna think, huh, this is different. 
you're not just completely submitting to me. You're like actually challenging the status quo, and that is interesting. In exchange for the young girl's true name of Seer, Freya would bestow her with the divine name Horn. It was a deal that solidified her fate the moment it was made, but at the very least unshackled her from the frozen darkness she'd only known before. Where she had only lived as a poor, unkempt child, she would now be reborn as a goddess. Let's go. So it's from this we know- Yeah, and this is the shackles of goddesshood that Horn was mentioning in the beginning of season 5, and I was like, why does Seer have shackles of goddesshood? Is Seer also like a secret goddess? Nah, this is it. Oh, Horn's original name was Seer, and in exchange for a better life, she had given it up to Freya. Part of this better life included literally becoming Freya, which was a transformation only possible via the divine sorcery, Vanna Seder. It's Seder. once this spell was- Vanna. Remember, Vanna last name. Very important, because Catboy Big Bro and Anya. Vana, right? Tavern Girl, that's some special stuff going on there too. ...active that Horn would be able to masquerade as the one and only goddess, while Freya herself could spend her days as Seer. Yeah, fucking flipping burgers. I can't believe- again, it's just this crazy that like, Freya was flipping burgers trying to get to Bell for five seasons. That image in my head. I wish we had some sort of like- I wish we had like Damachi break time. Some kind of chibi shorts. Where you could have these slice of life comedic moments come to life. And we could see Freya as Seer flipping burgers. And maybe we could have like an internal monologue of, you know, Freya actually talking about, thinking about how she really feels about this fucking job. So, every time we've seen Seer ourselves in the anime, it's always been Freya living yep. her life as a mortal. There is no real Seer apart from the instances when Freya or Horn are being her. The fabricated identity. The key thing to know about this, though, is that the spell shared all of Freya's emotions with Horn, but it never shared any of hers back. Hmm. No. The connection was a one way street in which only Horn would experience everything. And maybe Horn was going slowly fucking crazy, and that's why she wants to break the shackles? This made her a goddess through and through, since aside from being. And that feelings is definitely gonna make Horn. Love Bell more and more, right? Unable to use Arcanum, everything down to her very feelings were identical to Freya. It would honestly be no exaggeration to call her the goddess's daughter. What went to ruin this self-made paradise, though, was the insatiable affection Freya began to let overwhelm her. Mm. Because Horn and Freya were connected on an emotional level, Horn knew just how bewitching such feelings were. Every time she would masquerade as Freya, she would sense this part of her goddess that wanted to stop being a goddess. This divine, heavenly ruler who mortals My couldn't even comprehend god. was now trying to demean herself in a way that no god ever should. So, to think Freya would want to become a mere girl just like how she was, well, that was something Horn knew that she could never let happen. It's for this reason she felt she had no choice but to plot Bell's assassination. Mm. If she was gonna ensure her goddess remained a goddess, then Bell needed to be removed from her life completely. Like, porn is all about preventing Freya from, what, being corrupted by Bell? It should be the other way around. Freya probably wants to corrupt Bell, but no, it's like, Freya needs to stay a goddess. Horn needs to make sure that happens. Or, because the closer you get to Bell, the less that's gonna happen. The thing is, killing him wasn't as easy as strangling him in his sleep. As he continued to grow day after day, he Haven't seen an Argo Vesta yet this season, I wonder when that's gonna happen. Even if she did somehow get a proper chance alone with him, Bell was too strong to fight alone. There was no chance she'd be able to gather help either, since despite everyone in the Familia being jealous of him, none had ever considered actually trying to murder him. Dude, I, I was really thinking about this recently. After the most recent episode too, because again, all these, you know, elite members are all just in it, part of the plan. They are the biggest cucks in anime. They are the biggest simps and cucks because all of them are there for their love for Freya. But they can't ever have that relationship that Belle and Freya could have. But they still cling on to it because it's their goddess. Like, bro, imagine being that fucking cucked. Horn was by herself when it came to conspiring about such. The day such plans turned into veritable action was the day Freya ordered her to deliver the invitation. You see, after coming face to face with the rabbit stealing her goddess away, an unstable swirl of emotions nearly overwhelmed her. That's why she was so ruthless and just mean during this first, you know, impressions. I was like, this girl is psycho, but this makes a lot more sense. 
she was desperately resisting the urge to kill him right there and then, all while fighting against this intense love towards him that wasn't even hers. Because of that deeply shared connection with her goddess, this brief glimpse into what it was Freya was so invested in showed her just how oppressive such compelling emotions were. Her body and spirit were ravaged by feelings of affection for him, ravaged. proving right there why she needed to act. Now, it didn't matter how intense Horn's false love for Belle was because, at the end of the day, her loyalty was unwavering. Emotions were meaningless in the face of faith, and it was for that reason the Horn bet. knew she needed to free Freya from such emotions too. But like, Horn is at the end of the day doing this for Freya. I wonder how Horn feels now. Maybe Horn will be the one that actually clutches for us. The more that I hear about this cut content and how Horn feels, right? And she's ultimately just doing this kind of for Freya. And now that Freya's crashing out and taking Belle just by force, is this really the right way to do things? Will the image of Freya that exists in Horn be gone because we just keep going down this path? Is Horn gonna actually, like, be an ally? in this current situation where everyone is against us and gaslighting that Belle doesn't even, like, exist outside of the Freya family? If her life was the cost to cleanse Freya of what can only be called corruption, then that was a price she was more than willing to pay. This brings us to Horn's proposition to Freya, which, while on the surface seemed like a proclamation of love, was actually a facade intended to make Freya think it was. Okay. With the request as shameless and arrogant as the one she made when they first met, Horn used her shared feelings with Freya as a cover to hide her true intentions. She used the excuse of loving Belle because of Freya's heart as a means to set up a situation where she could try and murder him. Of course, Horn believed she was tricking Freya into thinking this was just a game to but did Freya already know? win Belle over, but in the end it seems like Freya knew more than she was letting on here. Mm. Before we get into that though, the whole proposal was something very out of character for Horn. She rarely ever took the form of Seer, and the fact she was confessing her true feelings now was certainly surprising due to how it's unexpected they were. Nevertheless, regardless of how true or false her feelings towards Belle was, for Horn this was all with the intent to kill. Freya would have her day first trying to win Belle over, while Horn would get hers after trying to do the same. It was the only way to set up an opportunity where she could possibly kill him, one uninterrupted by anyone else. Such a window would be very narrow though, so if she was going to maximize the amount of time to make it happen, then plans needed to be set up beforehand. Part of those plans included enlisting the help of Otar, which was actually a very risky gamble in and of itself. Reason being that if she shared her plan and Otar disagreed with it, then he would likely kill her right there just for plotting against Freya. Hey, or he would Luckily, snitch. Otar shared similar thoughts to her as he too sensed what Freya's true wish was. Huh. Even Otar is... okay. So even like the closest simps, like this is like the number one simp, right? He's the strongest here. Even he's kind of saying like, nah, this is kind of wrong. Maybe these dudes will actually clutch for us later in the future. He could see the path Freya was trying to wander down and knew very well what actions would best serve her interests in the truest sense. He wasn't so bold as to act on them without direct orders though, but with Horn now presenting an opportunity to do so with minimal involvement, well, that was an opportunity he knew he couldn't pass up on. So far, he's only shown the stoic face that it just shows complete submission, but maybe there's a part of him that feels like this is wrong. Ever since season 2, I don't know, his face has always just been just cold, nothing, a little bit of a frown. But maybe there's something boiling deep inside. Like, are, are they... I don't know if this is supposed to hint that, like, maybe some of them will realize that what Freya's doing is bad and start to kind of slowly help Belle. Who knows? You see, he knew Horn's existence was a special one. He knew she was the only person who could possibly change Freya's future drastically. This was what Horn was banking on Otar realizing, hoping it would help him come to the same conclusion that she came to. So, with his loyalty also extending beyond just the surface level of what Freya wanted, Otar surprisingly agreed to assist Horn only if for an instant. Okay. She never said anything about trying to murder Belle, but by at least framing it in a sense that she could win Belle's heart over Freya, that was enough to gain his assistance. It seems Otar also understands just how detrimental Freya's obsession over Belle is. Horn had also- So these dudes are thinking, they're not just being cucked, they're not just being simps, okay? It's good to know that like, in the back of their mind, they're not just blindly just accepting what Freya's doing. And it's like, alright queen, you can do no wrong. Some of them are like, 
yo, we, we should kind of stop this. Like, yo, this is kind of fucked up. So, like, again, it, it would be very impactful if, you know, Freya's own people, like, maybe even, like, betrayed her to side with Belle and to help us out. Ugh, I, I thought that they're just mindless zealots. So tried to enlist the assistance of Hedden, but it seems that backfired and turned Belle into a much better date than she was counting on. <laughs> Either way, the entire time Freya was on the date with Belle here, Horn was stuck in this box, forced yeah. to feel every emotion that Freya was feeling. There were times she'd get so flustered that even her face would turn red. It was one- <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's very cute. Once that night had finished, though, that the cruel nature of love was made abundantly clear to them. Since the object of their love would never reciprocate it, that meant passion and lust were the only ways to maintain his attention. As in, just fucking whore your body out. Take him. Since that passion and lust was denied by the same pure desire that denied their love too, it left their own emotions completely unanswered. Bro, they're Freya Horn, bro. They're just blue balled. They're just like, damn, I'm so down bad right now. You're just fucking denying everything. It left them wondering what else could they have done to win Belle's heart here. Simply dismissing their feelings wasn't an option since for someone so long lived as Freya, to even come across a choice like this was exceedingly rare. She wasn't a child who could simply laugh off these emotions like they were nothing. No, the compassion overwhelming her was a poison. The relationship she desired was a cross both now had to bear whether they wanted to or not. So, when faced with someone so pure, no amount of love, passion, or lust could hinder their desire, what do you do to gain their heart? You... Just... <laughs> You just brainwash everyone except him. You can't even brainwash him. So the entire city, everybody except a few people like Hestia, right? Asfi and Ryu is gone. Um, Hermes, maybe he's still around because of the letter that we mentioned. And Hermes is actually looking fucking sick right now over here on the left, bro. He, Hermes has honestly been one of the most mysterious and cool people, even though people shit on him. You know, it's like, haha, Asfi, you know, like corrects him and... Hermes is acting aloof and kind of like stupid and ditzy, but nah, dude, this guy is a schemer for sure. So again, it's just brainwash everybody. Don't ask for consent. She did announce ahead of time though. She did announce like, all right, guys, I'm about to do something really fucked up. I don't feel bad about it though. It is what it is. And then she uses her goddess power. Entirety of Orario is basically just... Out in the crazy wonderland where everything just believes that Belle is part of Freya family and nothing else. This was the question Freya couldn't find an answer to, instead leading her to the conclusion, love was cruel. And so was Belle for making her feel this way. These were the fault? emotions Horn dealt with that night as well, bringing her into the next day ready to do what needed to be done. So, Otar would guide Belle to where she was, but the rest of the Freya Familia would try to stop her. Somehow they'd found out about Horn's plans to kill Belle and were now on a mission to try and stop that. Belle and Horn would luckily get away, but not before first bumping into Hermes and Hestia. To explain what it is that made Seer's visage such a shocking one, it's the fact that no god or goddess can see through her. Hmm. Normally, the gods can look upon mortals and see who they are, but for Seer, she was an empty space that couldn't be examined at all. Oh! When you're in a disguise, gods and goddesses can tell, but Seer is a special case. As far as any of the deities knew themselves, to them, she was an irregular unknown to the mortal realm. That was- I want to believe that Mamma Mia knew. <laughs> In my head canon, Mamma Mia knew the entire time. What made her such an appealing person to spend time with? She was an anomaly no god except for Loki could possibly understand. That's actually why Freya would always have to go to Donatus herself, since if Loki ever- Jesus Christ. Oh, the Freya fans- Stupid good. ...saw her while Horn was masquerading as her, then she would instantly see through the illusion and expose her. She was the only one who- Wait. Is Loki a girl or a guy? That's a dress. Is he just cross-dressing? I thought Loki's a guy. I'm confused. My dick is too. ...then she would instantly see through the illusion and expose her. She was the only one who possibly could, but Freya also had a rule that Horn could never meet Hestia either. It makes this yet another crime added to the list committed in order to achieve her dream. Hmm. She'd now disobeyed her goddess's direct commands, plotted under the cover of a seemingly fair contract, then acted on that plot to steal away someone considered one of the goddesses favored. And that's what Horn they got fucked up. They were grave sins from which there was no salvation. 
it was in these moments. I wonder what's happening with Horn currently. Is she just like locked up? I feel like maybe Horn could help us out. Maybe I'm crazy. Grave sins from which there was no salvation. It was in these moments while they were running away though that for the first time, Horn got to experience Belle's pure heart. His blinding sentiment and unyielding compassion aroused her own soul in a way she never expected it to. Aroused. Although it was for a very brief moment, this small piece of him he unknowingly shared with her allowed her to finally understand why it was her goddess had fallen for him. In this moment that Belle was hers and hers alone, her heart was being driven absolutely mad. So, after finally experiencing the true love Freya constantly experienced herself, Horn knew more than ever now just how unforgivable Belle's existence was. Basically, this is why she tried to kill Belle and make sure Freya doesn't become corrupted. Which is so funny because, like, I think Freya's the one corrupting Belle or she, her goal is to corrupt Belle. As much as she was being driven mad by her passion, her hate towards him grew equally stronger. Her loyalty wasn't going to allow any hero to seduce her. To Horn, Freya didn't need a partner dragging her down to the mortal realm. This was the wish Horn so desperately desired, and the actions she took to achieve it were sins she accepted willingly. It may be a direct betrayal to the goddess she swore fealty to, but the end result was one she truly believed would be the best for her. She betrayed goddess Freya because she cares about Freya. Kinda complicated, but you know, it makes sense. As the only one who could understand the depths of Freya's heart, she alone could foresee what it was that was happening to her. That's why Horn did what she did, since the path Freya was on would undoubtedly lead to her corruption and fall. Unfortunately, Horn's plan would fall just short itself, not because of her or the Freya Familia's intervention, but rather- He is actually so cool. Yeah, the Chuni stuff, right? When we're doing Slice of Life stuff, he's like cringing at the Chuni stuff, but when he's in like serious moments and we're fighting and he says the Chuni stuff, it's like, chills, brother. He's epic. But rather because Belle saw right through her. From the very beginning, Belle knew that this wasn't Seer. Though it was very brief, he had picked up on her murderous intent the, the moment the two locked eyes together. Oh, This was too. why Horn also believed Freya knew what she was doing too, since if even Belle can sense her true Freya intentions, can. then there was no way her goddess couldn't either. That being the case, it was likely she accepted the game just so that she could test Belle. It was a revelation that made Horn feel like nothing but a clown dancing for Freya's amusement. Even so, she had no regrets trying to do what she thought was best. Freya may be blinded by her love for Belle, but as an outsider with a very clear look at what's happening inside, Horn, understands Horn knew the best. nothing Freya could do would change anything. It didn't matter how maddening her desire for him was, Belle's steadfast feelings would never be hindered by anyone. So. Though Horn wasn't able to change Freya herself, she could at least be satisfied knowing her goal would be achieved anyway. It was just gonna happen at the hands of Bell himself. After her brief yet telling encounter with him, Horn truly believed he would be the one to finally free Freya from the spell that was binding her. Now, the that rest wasn't the was case though. Much as we saw, first with Bell rejecting Freya as Seer, then after that, Freya discarding Seer in order to approach things a different way. So, Seer's dead, and now there's only Freya left. Yep. A goddess who's willing to do anything to make Belle her own. I kind of really feel bad for people like Ryu and other people who, like, made close friendship with Seer, but that Seer never existed. It was Freya role-playing. What's Ryu gonna think? And Freya also said that Ryu was, like, a very important person to her, too. So it's not as if, like, this whole role-playing, you know acts was all fraudulent uh is is freya and ryu can they become friends later on i don't know this is gonna get messy but it is pretty interesting that of all the people that did kind of get away from the whole mind warp stuff asfi took ryu away ryu knows the truth what kind of role is she going to play we'll see you soon discarding seer had freed freya of the heavy emotions previously affecting her and instead replaced it with something far lighter she had essentially went and made everything simple for herself. From now, there was going to be no more games, but instead the single goal of taking Belle for herself. But like, he's not going to give up. You will never have him, like, voluntarily love you if you force this card. I don't really understand what Freya is thinking. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's just 
to down bad and she did a fucking mistake. I think that deep inside she knows this is a mistake, but like, what do you expect to happen? For Bell's spirit to get crushed? For him to accept Freya as his one and only lover? I don't think that's gonna happen. He's going to continuously to like deny. He will never be her ODR, the whole like hero thing. So yeah, that's the whole story behind Seer, Freya, and Horn. If there was any confusion before, I hope this video cleared things up a bit. The thing that I was a bit confused about was about Hestia's divinity, the secret power as to how it counters Freya's mind control shit. Because a lot of season one content, again, it's just completely wiped from my mind because that was a long fucking time ago and I barely even watched it like locked in. I just kind of passively glossed over it. But maybe that's also kind of spoiler content where we shouldn't know about that right now. But Hestia is a counter to Freya somehow. She has a letter to give to Hermes when it's the time. Asfi and Ryu, they're gone at the moment. And Horn, who knows what's happening? And Otaru and the rest of the gang, maybe they're gonna be tired of just being simps and maybe they will actually help us out. It would be cool if, you know, the rest of the Freya family actually side with Belle as they realize that this is fucked up. Even like this is too much cuckoldry for us too. Like, we know what's right for, you know, our goddess and for her own sake, we will also kind of like go against her. Maybe there's going to be something like that or maybe they'll just triple down and just be completely subservient. But that is the video for Mr. Any News. Please go give the video a like. Here is the link. And I will see you guys next time.